Hello guys, in this video we are going to discuss our question subdomain count. So what we are given in the input? We are given a number. What this number represents? Basically it's a string, right? So we are given a string. Not just a single string, we might given a more string. We are given an array of string. So a single string, right? A single string, what it represents? That here as it is 999. So we visited this website www.webcoding.com 999 times. Now what is the catch here? that think see understand with the help of the output if we are visiting www.pepcoding.com that means we are also visiting its subdomains what are its subdomains that is .com right pepcoding.com right just pepcoding.com or www.pepcoding.com the question is related to this we are required to print all such configuration right so let's understand our question let's take the website let's take we are given a string okay and with what our website is nados dot pep coding dot com okay so what we are given is a string nados dot pep coding dot com and with a string we are also given a number here that is space space separated right so let's say the number here is 990 So we are given a string like this. We might be given multiple string or a single string. Okay. So let's first understand for a single string. So here, what I want you to understand is that a single, a single domain got multiple subdomain. Okay. So in this case, in this case, what are some multiple subdomains? Okay. So just com, just com is a subdomain. Just com is a subdomain. What else? Pepcoding.com coding.com is also a subdomain right and what else what else think about it yes nados.webcoding.com the whole this is also a subdomain this is also a domain right so in a single domain in a single domain nados.webcoding.com we got we get overall Three. Yes, you are right. We get overall three domains. Right. The one is dot one is just com, other is pepcoding.com, and one it's us. That is nados.pepcoding.com. So what this number represent here is how many times we visited our website. Right. How many times we visited our website? So if we are given 990, that means we visited our website nados.pepcoding.com 990 times. Now, if we visit, if we visit the whole domain. So does that mean that we, or we we are also visiting the subdomains? Are you getting me? So if we are visiting 990, if we are visiting its parent website, that is nados.pepcoding.com, that means we are also visiting com. Of course, we are visiting com, and that means we are also visiting pepcoding.com, right? So, so what that means? I want to show you the output again, right? So you have given the n number of every string where where a domain is separated by space where the number represent the visit count of the domain you have to find the number of visit for each subdomain right so these are our subdomains and we are required to find the number of visit so for the parent domain the number of visit is 990 here so for the subdomains what will be the number of visit yes it also be 994.com it will also be 990 for pepcoding.com as well as 990 for nardos.com right now now let's see more let's see more sample input because this question is a bit you know like it's a bit tricky to understand maybe so let's see some more input okay so now let's say now let's say we are given this nardos.webcoding.com again right so we are given a array of strings right and we are given more strings let's take some more example we are also given we are also given what a string that is well, let's say um, 410 or 500 5 5 10 okay so we are given just pepcoin.com okay so if we are given these two strings okay so let's understand this case 
So now we are given these two string nardos.com, nardos.pepcoding.com and pepcoding, right, right, pepcoding.com. Of course, let's add com here. Okay. So again, what this number represents here? Okay. The number is space separated. What this number represents that how many times we visited this website? Okay. The visit count. Okay. And here also it represents, they are two different strings. Okay. Now in the output, what we are required to print, what we are required to print that the, how many times, how many times overall we will visit, how many times overall we are going to visit its subdomains. Okay. So first let's, let's not think about that. How many times we will visit. Let's write the subdomains. Okay. So what will be the subdomains of nardos.pepcoin.com? It will be just com. That's the first domain. What else? Pepcoding.com. Right. Pepcoding. com. Okay. What else? Nardos.pepcoding.com. Right. Nardos.pepcoding. Okay, so these are the subdomains, and now these were the domains that we got for the first input string, right? These were the domains we got for the first input string. Now, what about the what about the next string? Okay, so here, okay, let me also write the number we are given. Okay, so if if the parent if the parent domain got visited 990 times. <laughs> Sorry, if the parent domain got visited 990 times, that means my subdomains also got visited. The think about it. If we went nardos.pepcoin.com 990 times, that means we also went com 990 times, right? Because we are subdomain. So let me write it here. So we went 990 times 990 com. We also went 990 pepcoding.com and 990 nardos.com. Now now what? Now the second string. In the second string, what will be our what will be our sub subdomain? So let's see. So it will be com again. It will be com. What else? You have gained the whole string that is pepcoding.com. So let's write it. Pepcoding. Not com. Okay. Now also let me write it how many times he visited this 510 and this also 510 because if we visited the parent domain 510 times and of course i'm gonna visit its subdomain that much time as well okay so now again let me read out the question for you okay so here again, when you visit, it is it is written here in simple English. When you visit a domain like www.pepcoin.com, that means you also visit a parent domain that is pepcoin.com, right? If you are visiting the whole website, that means you are also visiting pepcoin.com and just com. Perfect. Now we are required again. What are task? We have to find the number of visit for each subdomain. So what is the number of visit for each subdomain? So think about it here. Here we got what we got com two times. So it's a overall one domain, right? Com. So what is the total? What is the total visit? Total number of times we visit the com domain. Think about it. Of course, it's simple. It's 990 plus 510. That is your 1500. Yes, 1500 times we visit the com domain. Okay. Okay. Now that we know that, what about pepcoding.com? So earlier we visited pepcoding.com 990 times, right? From the first string and the second string, we also visited, we visited again, but this time 510 times. So the overall will be 1500, right? For what domain? For my subdomain that is pepcoding.com. Simple as that, right? Perfect. Now, this 990, right? This our website nardos.pepcoding.com. And we I already visit I only visited one time because it is not a subdomain of anyone, right? It is not a subdomain of anyone. I visited my overall website 990 times. So here it is going to be what? 
990 times I visited Nardo's dot web coding. Also, if you have not visited already our website nardo.pepcoding.com, so I suggest you to visit it. I mean, it's an amazing website with a lot of content. You are gonna love it. Okay. So, this will be our output basically. What it indicates that the number of times we visited all our domains, right? We the overall count, right? So we visited dot com. We visited com overall fifteen hundred times. We visited webcoding dot com overall fifteen hundred times. Nine ninety here, five hundred and here. Okay, and here again, I want to say we can have more strings. We can have more strings, right? Like what? Like if you want to see the example, I can even show you the example. Okay. Okay, uh, let me create some space first. Mm, yeah. Perfect. So let's say we are given one more string. Okay. Okay, and let's say we are given content. Content. Dot coding I think it is not really visible let me again write it okay so it's time we are given content right content dot pep coding dot com coding dot com and what's the count where you are given we visited what thousand times visited it thousand times so now first again i want you to understand that this is a string right and the number is say space separated with number is shared space separated with the domain okay so again what we see what we see now that okay 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 some space some space is going to be lovely so let's give some space yeah i think it's visible oh, what Mm -hmm. we did something okay so let's see so let me erase this okay so these were the subdomains that we got using our first string that is 990nandos.pepcoding.com then using the second string 510pepcoding.com we got these subdomains and this is the count now for the third string what are the subdomains think about it of course com is there so it is going to be com okay first we are going to write the subdomains what else it is of course again we got pepcoding.com so let's write it here pepcoding.com what else now the whole domain that is content content dot Pep coding dot com. Perfect. So we got these three subdomains overall. And what about the count? What about the count? The number of times we visited. So if we visited the whole domain content dot pep coding dot com thousand times, that means we also visited dot we also visited com thousand times. That also means that we visit pep coding dot com thousand times as well and content dot pep coding time thousand dead times as well. So what is the total? What is the total answer? Total times we visited all these strings. So if we are going to simply add it, let's say, and let's see what will be our answer. Okay, let's see what will be our answer. Let me show it to you with the help of blue pen. So first we are going to check the string that exists in all the string. What is it? Com. We can see com exists in all our three strings, right? And what is the count for com? It is 1000 plus 510 plus 990 plus 990. What is going to be 2500? 2500 for com. Then for pepcoding.com. Then for pepcoding.com. What it is going to be? It is going to be 990 plus 510 plus 1000. That is again 2500. Perfect. Now for 
this for this string that is nadus.pepcoding.com, right? It's a unique string, right? It's a unique domain that we visited only one time, only in our one string, right? Not one time, 980 times, of course. Nadus.pepcoding. dot com okay how many times you visited 990 times and what about content dot pepcoding dot com again this is our string content dot pepcoding dot com and we visited this thousand times so that will simply be our answer that the number of times we visited all our subdomains, right? And our domain. Now, the question that comes to our mind that how we will solve this. Okay. So if we have a clear understanding of the question now, let's take an example and then you are going to understand it. Okay. So, okay. Let me drag it here. All right, again, control C, control V, yeah. So we got these two strings, okay. Let's first talk about this string, nados.pepcoding.com and a 990. So this is a string, this is a string, right. So now we know that 990 is telling me the times I visited my website. Right. But of course, this is a string value. So what will be my first step? My first step. My first step is going to somehow, somehow I want to break this into two strings. Into two things basically. What is it? The numerical that I need and the domain. So my first step is going to be to break this into a number. Into a number that is 990 and a domain in a domain that is nados dot web coding dot com so that will be my first step to break this to break the string that is given to us into two bots that is my number right and of course i got to convert the string into a number i know how to do that i will do that but my first step is going to break it into two parts. What is going to be my second step? Okay. My second step. All right. Now, I got nados.pepcoding.com. And now somehow, I got to convert it into, I want to get all my subdomains for my domain. Right. All the subdomain. So what is my domain? It is nados.pepcoding.com. It is nados.pepcoding.com. So somehow, somehow, okay, we are just doing the abstraction here. Somehow, I'm going to break it into all the subdomains. So what are all the subdomains? It is, let me write it here, right? It is com, it is pepcoding.com, it's pepcoding.com. What else? Nardos.pepcoding.com. Nardos dot web coding dot com so that will be my second step to break my to break my domain into into what into subdomains right and of course this is my domain right so now that if i break this into subdomains the question is very simple for me right now what i got to do now what do I go to do? That assign assign the value, right? The visit count to all my domains. So if, what I can say that if you have, if you did this task, right? If you did this task, we know that these these subdomains, these subdomain domains value value means how many times I visited is nine ninety nine ninety. Now I got to check what and whether I have already visited this, right? Because, because, why is that? Because multiple string can be provided to me, right? As we discussed, there is the probability that I will also have 
another domain something like let's say just pepcoing.com let's say we got another domain that is just pepcoding.com so we are going to process one string at a time so we got to take care of it that if you have already visited com right if you have visited com already if we got a value that is assigned to my com already then i'm going to basically update that value right now how can i achieve this how can i achieve this how can i achieve this thing this behavior that if it already exists i'm going to update its value right if a com already exists I'm going to update its value for pepcoin.com already exists. So what I can do is simply, yes, you are right. Use a hash map for it. Simply use a hash map for it. Okay. So now the question is fairly simple. I want you to first try it yourself before moving to the solution. So now we are going to code this. Sorry. Yeah. So now we are going to code this. Okay. Step by step step by step okay so what we are given is a array of strings array of strings so we are going step by step what is our first step our first step is to process our first one domain right so we are gonna process our one domain one string so cp domains right we are gonna do it step by step now now as we discussed in the open book what we did initially is that we separated our number and the domain as we are given in this format in this format the number the count how many times we visited and a and the domain so how we will separate it so to separate this we can use a simple we can use a simple function that is provided to us by our language that is split in what terms we are going to split it and again i want to repeat it again that the domain and the count is space separated here there is a space right so what we are going to do split it we are going to split it we are in the terms of space so string let's say i create a temporary array it what split does is give me an array what split my domain domain dot split on the basis of space on the basis of space so uh, yeah so it is going to split the spring uh, string for me okay yeah now now we did the first step we did the first step we split we split our spring into two parts now we know that this is a number 990 so what we are going to do is convert the first part into a numeric value into an integer so that's to it so this is what this is our visit count that how many times you visited so visit count or yeah visit okay so how we will do is we are splitting it right so temp uh we are converting it into integer so integer parse int what we are com com uh, converting whichever is in the zeroth of our where our temporary array are you understanding why it is why it's a zeroth element why it is a zero element because again we are given 990 and pepcoin.com so in an array in an array we are going to get 990 first and then whatever whatever our website is pep.com let's say Right, so this is zeroth index, this is the first index. So in the zeroth index, we are going to convert it into an integer value. Perfect. So now that we have converted it into an integer value, what's our next step? Right. So what's our next step was to was to calculate the subdomains. Like what will be the subdomain of my string? I know in the in the first in the first index, my whole domain is there. So I want to calculate its subdomain somehow. So how will I calculate its subdomain? Okay. So let's 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 take our string again. So how the subdomains are separated? You can see that they are separated on the basis of comma. Right. So we are gonna do a simple thing. So let's 
let's see what we do so string words it is going to be a it going to give us an array okay we are going to use the split function again so what we are splitting this time is whatever is in our first index in temporary array right so we are going to split it and what we are going to split it in terms of a dot right but there is a catch to it so this is not going to work right this is not going to work why is that just think about it as, as how java works so if you are splitting in terms of a dot you have to add two slash here if you don't then the split function is not going to detect the dot perfect simple abstraction okay so it is going to split our string okay so let me show you as well so how it is going to split it okay so let me new page it it yeah okay so let's see for this string okay so it is simply going to create an array it is going to create an array right and we what uh, what is the domain like we already took care of 990 we took already took care of 990 now we get this words array basically right right so it is going to simply convert it into a string all its element that is separated by space okay let's see let's see let's see how it's going to get separated right so like nados right dot separated is going to be here nados then pep coding then call so you are going to get this 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 is will be a word string okay okay now of course this is not our complete string right so now what we are going to do is traverse our words array right traverse our words array okay what i want to tell you is that that if we traverse it from the start we are going to get nados right but of course this is not our whole string we need nados.pepcoding.com so how we can achieve this if we move from right to left if you move from right to left right are you are you able to understand me because com is a of course com is valid com is valid then of course if we add pepcoding.com here pepcoding.com here that is also valid if you add nados here so that is also valid so we are going to move from the right from the end to the start so let's towers for for int idx let's say idx is equal to words dot length minus one and idx is greater than or equal to zero we are going to move decrement our idx now there are two cases that i want you to understand what are those two cases that let me write the indexes zero and two okay so let's say we we in a string in a string we store our answer so if we are at the second index we can we are at the second index and i say my string is com that is perfect but if i am at the first if i am at the first index i can't say i can't say that my string is pep coding my just my string is just pep coding no it is not pep coding is not a domain the domain is pep coding dot com so what that means that if I'm at any other index except the last index, I gotta add a dot as well as this com. Right. So, right. As well as this com. As well as a string till now. Okay, as well as a string till now. Not this com. Okay, let me show you again. So if I'm at the zeroth index, if I'm at the zeroth index, I got nados. But of course, this is not valid. So I gotta also add the string, right? Pepcoding.com. So that's the main reason I am moving from right to left. Okay. So two cases if idx is equal to words dot length minus one, this is one case. Else the other case. Now I want to discuss on something. That we can of course use a string here. Right. We are gonna of course we, we can use a string here, but we are going to use string builder. Why is that? We are gonna use a string builder because in string builder add in the other optation are less expensive compared to a string right they are less expensive and what we want is to get 
the best possible code right to write the best possible code so we are going to simply use a string builder here right let me create a string builder string builder sb equal to new string builder okay so we created a string builder now let's see so if our index is equal to words dot len dot one that means the last index so we can simply we can simply append in string builder we append we can simply append what we can simply append it so we are gonna append words idx if it's the last index that means it is com right com in our case right it is not going to be always com but in our case but if if it is not the last index so what we are going to do so that means if we are at pep coding if we are at pep coding in the first index right so what we are going to do think about it what we are going to do so somehow we got a insert a dot and a com here okay but understand this that we are moving from right to left first we are moving from right right to left first so can we do this uh sorry uh where's my this yeah so can we do this if we add a dot here sp dot append not append insert sp dot insert a dot here at the zeroth index okay so of course you might not be understanding it but now i'm guilt i'm gonna try it in this i have faith on you and the zeroth index i add words idx So what I mean here is see, see, so, so what I'm currently doing, let's say I create a string builder here. Okay. String builder is not like this, but just to show you, this is our string builder. Okay. So I am moving from rightward to leftward. So first I get to the second index, right? I get the second index and as in my string builder, I simply add com. I simply add com, right? perfect then i do the com work i do the work that i have to do with com then what i do after i did work then again i'm gonna get to the loop right now i am at now i'm at the first index i'm at the first index so this time in my string builder my string builder already holds com my string builder already holds com right so what I'm going to do is simply in the start of my in the start of my string builder, I'm gonna insert a dot. Right? I insert your dot. Now I can also insert my current string that is pep coding. That is pep coding. Right. Right. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I did. So what I did. If it is not the last index, I inserted a dot, then I added my current string. I added my current string. Perfect. So what will be my string builder will basically the, the final value will basically my subdomain. Now, now as we discussed, let me show you the slide again. Now we gotta do something with the hash map. Why is that? We gotta check if the string already exists or not. Right. So we are going to create a hash map. We are going to create a hash map of what type? Of what type? Of the string and integer. I am going to call it map to new hash map. Perfect. Right. So I have created a hash map of string and integer. So what I am going to do is convert my convert my string builder into a string let me call it subdomain equal to sb that is my string builder dot to string so now i do i did this what step is step is left to check if if my map if my map can not this basically yeah i mean let me show you let me show you with the help of some visualization okay Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see from the start. Okay. So my string is com. com. So I got to check that in my map, let me also create a map. What map is going to store? It's a string and the count, 
the how many times I visited it, the subdomain basically is a string. Then I get com. I get com. Now I wanna check that whether whether my string already contains com or not. Why is that? Because your string might already contain com. Because we are given multiple string. Again, we are given multiple string. Again, for example, you are given the other string that is just webcoding dot com. Dot com. Right. With what value? Let's say this is a 500. Right. And this is a 990. Right. So that means here. Your com value is going to be 500 right and for prep coding let's say we have uh, we have did this task for the first string and for prep coding also prep coding dot com let me get some space for prep coding dot com it is also 500 okay so now what we are going to do again let's see from the start we are at here and we made a string com so we are going to check if in our map com exists or not so yes com exists so with what value with what value that is 500 so what we are going to do is update it update it and add our value to it that is 990 so it is going to be what it is going to be 1490 perfect then we go here right then we go here in the first index what we do is add a dot here and pep coding that is our string that is pep coding now we again check what we check if pep coding.com is present yes it is present in our map right and then we simply update it with our value that is 990 again we move it again we move it and this time and this time what we do is add our string here right we add a dot first and then our string that is nados and now we check if nados.com is present in our map. No, it is not present. Then you simply put your value. So nados webcoding.com. So you simply put your value that is 990. And in the end, what we did is simply print this value from our map. Simple. So these are the steps that we discussed in brief. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to put, we are going to put our value in our map in our subdomain right in our subdomain so what i'm going to use here if the value exists map.get if the value exists i'm going to do something if it doesn't exist then a default thing map.get or default right so if the subdomain if there is a value that is assigned to my subdomain then i'm going to add what i'm going to add my current uh, to the variable visit count here i'm going to add my visit count right and if it doesn't not exist so it's simply default value that is going to zero plus my visit count perfect so now that i did this my map is filled with the value that is needed to us that is needed to me perfect i filled my map now i have to simply get the value from my map and print it so what i'm going to create is array list of string right because i have to give array return array of list as my answer so new array list Right. I want to traverse traverse my my what 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 I'm going to traverse think about it what I'm going to traverse I'm going to traverse my map so for that I can use map dot map dot key set I can use map dot key set right and now what I'm going to do is create a string builder why is that again I can use a string but the operation here is much much faster than the string right so to make our code faster we are using a string builder now what i'm going to append in my map let's see what i'm going to append in my map so in a map what i'm storing is the string is a string and the count so simply i can append com with with the count the and the space and the count 1490 Right, same webpoint.com and a space and the count as the output that is given to us. Perfect. So that's what we are going to do. Simple. So let's do it. Sb dot append 
डॉट पेंड डॉट एस बी डॉट पेंड और दिन फर्स्ट वी आर फर्स्ट वी आर गेटिंग द वैल्यू राइट एस बी तो इट इज गोइंग टू बी नॉट दिस नॉट दिस नॉट दिस फर्स्ट वी हैव टू राइट द काउंट ऑफ इट सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी वन फोर नाइन जीरो देन आर कॉम देन आर कॉम सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू गेट द वैल्यू सो एस पी डॉट अपेंड मैप डॉट गेट मैप डॉट गेट सब डोमेन परफेक्ट एंड देन वॉट वी अपेंड वी आर अपेंड स्पेस एस पी डॉट अपेंड स्पेस देन वॉट वी अपेंड एस बी डॉट अपेंड दैट इज आर की दैट इज आर सब डोमेन सिंपली ओके आफ्टर अपेंडिंग इट ऑल वॉट वी डू इज सिंपली कन्वर्टेड इन टू अ स्ट्रिंग राइट बिकॉज इट इज अ वॉट इट इज अ स्ट्रिंग बिल्डर सो वी गॉट अ कन्वर्टेड इन टू अ स्ट्रिंग सो हाउ वी विल कन्वर्ट इट इन टू अ स्ट्रिंग लेट से रेज इज आर एर सो रेज रिजल्ट डॉट एड एस बी दैट इज स्ट्रिंग बिल्डर एंड देन वी कन्वर्ट इन टू स्ट्रिंग परफेक्ट right and then we get out of the this loop and we simply return we simply return okay uh wait i think we did some extra brackets we added some extra brackets we are going to fix this we are going to fix it let's fix it okay so we have a return here return result right so this is our for loop Okay, we should have, we have to add brackets here and remove brackets from here. Let's see if it's fine or not. Now let's run it, and if there is an error, error, we fix it. So twenty-eight line. Eight line. Uh, okay, a bracket here. And here seems good. Seems good. Here it should not be this. Uh, right. Now let's try running it. Perfect. Accepted. Now submit it. All the test cases got passed. Perfect. So I want to review it first. What we did. It's very similar to what we discussed. Okay. So we created a hash map. Then. We traversed all the strings. We are given an array, right? So we traverse a single string at a time. So first we split it. Why is we split it? Because we needed the count and the domain separated. Then what we did? We needed the subdomains. So what we did? We split it on the terms of a dot. We split it. Then we simply traverse from the right, from the end to the start. Why is that? So that we can achieve what the subdomain we want. So by going from traversing from the right, it got easy for us. So we simply got the subdomains. Now we checked that if our map contains that subdomain or not. If our map contains, we updated its value with the current count. If it does not exist in our map, so we simply put the default value zero and we added a current count. And then we simply added into a resultant resultant array, we a resultant array list, right? We simply added it. and we simply returned it so that's it for this video if you like this don't forget to like comment and share thanks for watching